This morning for our communion service, we're going to turn to Psalm 143 for the beginning. This psalm was written by King David. He had a prominent place in God's plan of redemption, so much so that when God became a man, he was called the son of David. And God told David that his son would rule the nations. David himself was called a man after God's own heart who would do all of God's will. David wrote much that is instructive to us on how to walk with God. We're going to consider some of the lessons from his life in a few minutes as we prepare for our hearts for communion. Our starting place will be Psalm 143, and just follow along as I read the first four verses. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your faithfulness, in your righteousness, and do not enter into judgment with your servant. For in your sight, no man living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. In the, to the ground. He has made me dwell in dark places like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart is appalled within me. David was in great stress because, distress because of the persecution of his enemies. This drove David to pray to God who had chosen him. He appealed to God's faithfulness and righteousness. But as he considered God's righteousness, he interjected a request that God not enter into judgment with his servant. And why did he ask this? Because no man living is righteous in God's sight. David's confession is one that we must all come to if we are going to come to an acceptable righteousness with God. That is the confession that we are not able to stand before God in our own merit. We cannot pass through the scrutiny of God's judgment on our own. We need a righteousness that comes from God, and David found this righteousness. The Apostle Paul, in his great teaching on justification by faith rather than by works in Romans chapter 4, cites two men from our Old Testament scriptures one is Abraham, and the other is David. Of Abraham, it was written that he believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Then Paul wrote that David also speaks of the blessing of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from the works, and he quotes what, from what David wrote in Psalm 32, how blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered, how blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. Here we, t we see two aspects of what it means to have a right standing with God. One is that the imputation of the righteousness of Christ to the undeserving sinner. And the other is the non-imputation of our sins which, for which we deserve to be punished. David knew that his righteousness was from God and that his sins were forgiven. <clears throat> David not only knew that he had no righteousness of his own and that his righteousness must come from God, he also knew that the one who has been given a right standing with God must pursue righteousness in his daily life. As you look further down in Psalm 143 at verse 8, he says, Teach me the way which I should walk. For to you I lift up my soul. And then in verse 10, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me to level ground. While David did not want God to enter into judgment with him on the basis of his own merits, he welcomes God's scrutiny of his heart and mind as a justified sinner in order that he may walk pleasing to God. 
He prays in Psalm 139, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. Listen to another prayer of David from Psalm uh, uh, 17. He says, Hear a just cause, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my judgments come forth from your presence. Let your eyes look with equity. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, and you find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. For the deeds of, as for the deeds of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept my, from the paths of the violent. My steps have not, have held fast to your paths, my feet have not slipped. It is interesting that three elements from the life of David are also present in our communion service. The acknowledgement of our spiritual bankruptcy, that is that we were dead in sin, that we were lost and we were helpless to do anything about it. As Jesus responded to the disciples when they said, well, who can be saved? He responded, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And then the second, after spiritual bankruptcy, is the need for the righteousness from God. In order to stand before God, Jesus became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. When we were dead in sins, God made us alive together with Christ. And then the third element is the scrutiny of oneself in order that we might walk pleasing to to a holy God. We are to examine ourselves before taking communion. Seeking cleansing and repentance from sin, we remember the Lord's death in the elements of the communion. The bread represents his body in which he bore the terrible penalty of our sins. This is the only means by which God could make us right in his sight. And the juice which represents his blood, which cleanses us from our sin and redeems us to God, as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 1.30, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Apart from the shedding of blood, There is no forgiveness of sin. The Lord's Supper was instituted by the Lord for his followers to keep in mind Jesus and his death for our sins. We are proclaiming the death of Jesus by participating in this ordinance. If you have not come to trust Jesus Christ as the only basis for your salvation, we ask that you abstain from participating We ask that you consider the need of your righteousness, of a righteousness that is beyond anything you can produce. In order to stand acceptable before a holy God, confess your need and receive the gift of righteousness from from the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who receive the elements may partake after they have searched their own hearts. When you're ready, partake with joy and gratitude for the marvelous gift of God's salvation. Men, come in service at this time. <laughs>